Hey, all right, this is Ruben Lowe, and it is Friday here in McAllen, Texas. My leadership talk for today. I was on a podcast, and I heard uh, Martin Lopez, and he wrote a book called uh, Curiosity Theory. I'm like, Curiosity Theory? Where, where, did, where did I hear that before? And, and it hit me. Your brain's kind of really interesting. Like, you can, you can task your brain. You know, like if you're talking about something and you can't remember something, you say, I'll think, I'll think of it. And your brain will go, oh, I better, I better go find it. And it goes in that gray matter Rolodex and it pulls it out and, you know, oh, that's what it was. <laughs> and a little delay, right? So I had heard Matthew Ferry. I was going to Dave and Buster's in Mission Valley in 2006 to see Zig Ziglar. And then Zig Ziglar pulled out. He got sick or got a conflict in his um, schedule or something. And he didn't show up. So I went anyways, and the guy that showed up in his place was Matthew Ferry. Okay, so his brother is Tim Ferry, real estate sales guru, right? And uh, Matthew, what got my attention right off, we started talking about the subconscious mind. And he called his subconscious mind his drunken monkey. Right, scared of everything, but it's really curious, right? And and it's like, you know, it it'll wreck, it just wrecks things, right? It just has to turn things upside down just to see what'll happen, right? And so, and that 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 made me think of a lot of my ex Navy SEAL buddies. <laughs> and uh, so, a couple years ago, I started tuning in to Matthew Ferry, and he's talking about enlightenment. He didn't talk a lot about the drunken monkey, right? But I, when I heard this, talking about this curiosity theory, um, I actually have Matthew Ferry's number in my phone. So I called, left a message. And his wife called me today. And so I told her some of the challenges I'm having here in um, the Rio Grande Valley with you know in the dynamic it's 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 not just because i'm a minority you know most everybody's mexican um there's a you know when it comes to our business the majority of people that were are not born in this country so english is the second language the accents are very heavy there's a lot of ahs, ums, oohs, you knows. They don't go to Toastmasters for sure, right? And I had figured out a while back that, oh, one thing is, um, in the Hispanic culture, there's a thing, there's a term called El Portio Cero, which means brown nosing. Well, it's, it, it means, um, sales right but they're they're talking about like a like a taco vendor right who's a uh, high pressure sales but they 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 mean it a different way it's like sucking up or brown nose into the boss and if you ever do that you are they don't trust you again and then so you hear these people get on these calls and they're like oh Sean we want to thank Sean Win and and you know Sean did Sean Win is the top guy in the industry not just our company in the industry okay and and he created this system that makes it possible for people from all walks of life to build this business without having you know being great speakers or looking you know being a good looking person or or dynamic personalities and so what he did was he made the information, the star. It's brilliant, right? But there's still people, and I figured out it's not the people making the presentation. It's the people that are watching the presentations and having a challenge because their heavy accent or or not fluent in their speech it's their problem or that they have this you know in their culture this 
they honor and respect their their superiors, their you know the leaders. Okay, that's that's not that's not a problem, except for maybe with somebody who's you know they think that's sucking up. That's that's a you know like an unfair way of trying to get recognition or promotion or whatever. Okay. So I'm like, oh, okay. But it, it's a culture clash. And so I'm, I'm talking with Kristen Ferry, Matthew Ferry's wife, and she suggested that I read a book that was, um, you know, by Matthew Ferry. And the, uh, the Velocity of Sales. So I ordered the book, all right, like $14. And, the, uh, and I looked up a video of Matthew Ferry, about an hour long, and I just had it playing in the background while I was sending out for my campaign manager invitations to the Fast Start and to the product um, highlights training tonight. The, the, the campaign manager with the tracker together is golden. And then plus with Salesforce, all right, it's golden. You just got to keep up. You, you got to update your campaign manager right when you are adding somebody to the tracker. They're not, they don't merge, which they wish they did, but they don't. So because of that, so you got to, but with that campaign manager, you can keep tickling your people right and get them to understand you know keep them up and, and eventually you know something they're gonna see is gonna get their interest okay and whether it's you know you learn all kinds of things with the product highlight training you know the fast start our business is you know the, the three things it's just basically three things and that's one your own personal financial strategy you get to be help create your own personal financial strategy with somebody who understands, you know, what products are going to benefit you when it comes to greater return taxes and protection. Then the other is the marketing, okay? And and with the counter, it makes things even better. The counter and the the uh, PDF of the uh, Saving Your Future book, it makes it just what you're doing is you're turning instead of trying to herd cats, you know, it's you're getting. You know, it's like ringing that bell. It's, uh, we raised hogs. We had six, probably 600 hogs in the barn. We had 80 sows. And they're all total confinement. And then one day in the winter time, the snow was about three feet deep. My stepdad went out to the barn and all the hogs were gone. Somehow they got out. Pigs are like, like octopuses, man. They're, they're escape artists. And they were down in the swamp. And he used to have a habit of when he fed the hogs, he'd go, here, boo, 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 boo. And he went, here, boo, boo, boo. And them hogs came out of the swamp, down the road, turned into the driveway, into the barn, all of them. All right, it was just a miracle that that, <laughs> that, that was able to happen, right? But it was the conditioning. And so when you get people you're able to attract them for in that area that that attracts them right they'll tune in so it's you can do that very well with our campaign manager and then of course then you have Salesforce and in Salesforce you know every time you talk to them it's like a in the mortgage business you have a conversation log in um, the uh, loan origination software whatever it is um, you know, there's different kinds now, but there was just one when I was doing it. But they all have a conversation log, so you put in the conversation, and that that's actually can be like used in court, court of law to cover your butt. But it, you know, you, it helps you in, in, in remembering what you talk about people talk to people about, and so these together, it's a very efficient system. Okay. Then, you know, so there's marketing your own personal financial strategy and 
ติยามแต่ that's all part of the fast start okay so the oh and licensing right and and licensing so that's um I just had somebody that's you know they signed up for the pre-licensed training and they're like you know where's my stuff well you got to go to the website and you got to log in and create a password and then it's right there right there at your fingertips every time you want it so that's what it is it, the fast starts licensing uh your own personal financial strategy and the marketing strategy and then that keeps evolving because of what's going on with the covid and the social distancing but it actually benefited us by the way we're doing things via zoom And not having to drag somebody down to a, to an office or to a meeting, but there are some people who like that personal interaction. They're either better at it when they're, you know, com they can communicate better that way, or they they receive it better that way. So that's those are the things that are that are happening right now. But what was really interesting with Matthew Ferry, because he is very, you know, if he, if it was if the roles were reversed. And he was doing a presentation to a, a group of Asians. He would start. He'd pick up an Asian accent. He's actually talking about he uh, he went somewhere in uh, in to Thailand and and to do a presentation. And he started picking up. You know, he started saying, he started talking, talking the way they talk. And and he it was totally unconscious. You know, subconsciously that he did started doing that, but he picked up on it. And the same thing, you know, in the southern people. So, how do you put yourself in a situation where you can hear the message, even though there's somebody with a heavy Asian accent giving the presentation? Or it's a young person, and they use a lot of slang. How do you do that? Um, when I first heard about Swan Nguyen, I couldn't understand what he was saying, and then I read his book, and it was like, it was like that movie John Carter, right, where the Martians gave him, you know, something to drink, and next thing you know, he could understand everything they were saying. It it was like that. Okay, so now I understand totally what he's saying. I get it. But I, I, I didn't until I read his book. So I read, I'd read his book if I were you. When it comes to uh, the young people, and and they get, you know, it, it's more breaks down to if you really want what we have, or what we can do for people. Okay, that's where it's important. Okay, when you want to figure out how to talk to young people, the millennials, yeah. Pay attention how that young person is talking, All right? If you, you know, if you're talking to the baby boomers, you know what makes what we do when it comes to being able to build a team. I've heard it, you know, called the uh, human mutual fund. It is most a lot of happens happens a lot happened to me when people are you know in their 40s, early 50s, and they get they realize they're behind, right? That they haven't been saving and Or their money hasn't been growing like it like it needs to be to keep up with the inflation and taxes, then they start taking undue risk, and which can put them even further back. With what we have, with your ability to build a team, that becomes an investment, and it's there's no risk. You, there's no risk. You can't lose it. Okay. In and. and So that's the secret weapon. That's the way for like the baby boomers that are seeing that they're behind to catch up. And they have a lot of knowledge, especially when it comes to leadership and training and teaching. They can excel in this area with our business and they can make up for lost time. So that is a big advantage for baby boomers with our business. All right. All right. And with uh, Matthew, so like turning Matthew Ferry's uh, strategies inside out, you know, instead of mirroring um, somebody different than you, it's 
understanding that person who's different than you and where they're coming from and figuring out how it's going to help you can make a big difference on how well you actually benefit from the trainings and the, and the Zoom and, and the exposure to this culture with uh, WSB. All right. Have a great day.